Hey guys, welcome to this MF Corner special. Today we're going to talk about what the process of engaging a financial planner can really look like. Now, if you recognize that you would like some amount of help with your financial planning, what is it really like working with a planner? What do they help you cover? Is there a minimum amount that you need to be talking about? What is the fee like? I think that, you know, since we're getting into a new financial year, not a new financial year, a new Sambath, it is a good time to be thinking about these things. Kalpesh, thanks for joining us in our studios and season's greetings to you as well. But, you know, um, I feel like there are people who are now recognizing that maybe they want some amount of help, they want to engage a financial planner, but it can be a little bit intimidating because you don't know, you've never done it before. And the way I look at it, this can be two ways, right? Either you come to a financial planner and you say that I just need help with my overall planning, this is what I make, this is what I spend and help me out. Or it could be that, say, I have 5 lakhs now, I have another 50,000, 1 lakh disposable every month, and I want you to help me invest. So these are the two situations that I see them as, but take us through the process, what would happen in both of these? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks, Pavitra, for having me on the show, and season's greetings to all the viewers of MF Corner and CNBC TV 18, and always a pleasure being here. Thank you. Uh, so, like, like the question goes, you know, uh, this is a thing which uh, is prevailing a lot in many investors' minds. Mm. And uh, I'm, I would like to segregate it into two parts. One is people who are just looking at MFs and one who are looking at having holistic financial planning, like what your question exactly states. Now, when uh, you know, you're talking about engaging with a financial planner mm -hmm. and to whom you're going to be paying fees and under the compliance or under the regulations which are there, only an RIA, which is a registered investment advisor, is supposed to be collecting fees from the client for the advice imparted on that particular basis. You need to understand that a registered investment advisor, a SEBI registered investment advisor, would always be looking at a holistic point of view mm. of your finances. Yeah. Okay, And more so if he's a financial planner and if he follows the textbook financial planning module, which is divided into you know understanding your cash flow, understanding your net worth, which is assets minus liabilities, understanding more importantly about your goals. Yeah. Okay, how do you achieve them? Are they realistic? When will you be able to gather a certain corpus? What is the inflation? And also m trying to help you understand, mitigate risk with insurance, and also at times try to advise you on personal taxation. Now, if there is a person who guides you on financial planning, like a, in India, we have the family doctor concept, who's there with you, you know, 24 seven, 365, to be with you and your family, he's a financial planner. He'll be looking at everything, Investment planning, 100% a part of it, mm. okay? Whereas, like what you said, the other part of the question, that if you feel for whatsoever reason that you do not need this type of holistic advice yeah. and you are just looking at investing money or, you know, having a, a short-term goal or a long-term goal and you do not wish to have your finances, you know, open out or have it for a long term, mm. then you are also okay with going with an RIA, or even a pure MFD, which is a mutual fund distributor. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the basic difference between the two is, on a, on a very compliance basis, is that like I mentioned, that the RIA can only collect the fees, I'm talking about the individual RIA right now, yeah. can collect the fees from the client, mm -hmm. and he's not eligible to collect commissions, mm -hmm. which emanate from the regular plans of mutual funds. Yeah. Whereas the mutual fund distributor, can only have commissions which he receives from the AMCs mm. and cannot collect fees from the client. Mm. That is the distinct you know, difference which people need to understand. Mm. But that does not mean that you know, the mutual fund distributor cannot impart good advice. Mm. So obviously in every field, there might be people who are for obvious reasons going to be looking at uh, you know, giving advice on uh, schemes which give them more commission or something. But then there are very genuine and good people yeah. who would look at client interest first, even in the mutual fund distribution thing, and be point to point conversation with him that this is what you require, this is what I'm giving, and that's the distributor. Mm -hmm. But the RIA would delve deep into that person's entire finances, mm -hmm. understand every you know aspect of his life, and then advise. Mm -hmm. And he's just getting paid pure fees. Yeah. 
And I guess there are a lot of things that you haven't even considered, you know, questions which you haven't asked yourself, which in maybe an investment advisor would be Obviously. way better place yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you know, ask you. See, As that's for the simple reason because, you know, once you give your data, like the process, yeah. when you sign up with an, uh, you know, investment advisor, an RIA, for him, data is God. Mm. He will take all the possible data from you and then give his, you know, 360 degree view on all your personal finances. Mm. He's not concerned about how your company works or something. He's concerned about what you bring home yeah. as your earning and what do you do with it. Mm. Are you, you know, having a positive cash flow, a negative cash flow? And the advice which is given is unbiased mm. because he doesn't have any conflict of interest with any other products which he gives through a letter of engagement with the client. Everything is transparent. Mm. So that type of ambiguity is removed. And like what you said, he will ask you questions probably which you will not ask yourself also. Because many people have this, you know, I would say an ego mm. that uh, they would not like to be, you know, brought out in the open. But once you have hired somebody who's looking at your holistic well-being. His job is to point that out to you. And, yeah, and you paid fees to him. Yeah. You might as well, you know, <laughs> answer them. Yeah. yeah. All right, I got that. And uh, but take us through, you know, the process a little bit because a lot of us just have not consulted financial planners in our lives. So, uh, what are the kinds of documents that you need to show, or you know, what information would you ask? Of course, what what is your salary? How much you make? If you're a salaried person, what you spend? But take us through what kind of information you would ask. Yeah. So, so once a, an individual signs up or a, a nucleus family signs up with uh, an RIA, uh, and he's under the financial planning module. Basically, there is, uh, you know, a host of documents which are required. First and foremost, his uh, KYC needs to be checked because that's more, uh, you know, to be compliant yeah. part of it. That needs to be checked. Secondly, his complete documents, his existing uh, cash flow needs to be put down. So what we do is we give an Excel sheet mm. with our own format of a cash flow and highlighting everything from a pin to an elephant which a person would either earn or spend on his day-to-day -day life on a monthly stroke annual basis. So he's like what you said, compelled to write down. And I always, you know, I'm a, I'm a great propagator of financial inclusion with your wife or your spouse, mm. whatever it is, you know. So it's better that two people do it together because ultimately they run the show, they run the ship on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So to each his own, but yeah. that's how it should be done. So that Excel sheet is very necessary that they would also, you know, be an eye-opening exercise for them that are we earning more or are we spending more? Because many times people live in a la-la land and they really don't understand. But you're spending beyond your means. Yeah, you're spending beyond your means unless you're actually putting pen to paper. Yeah. Secondly, we understand is getting the net worth. That is thus far, how much amount have they invested in which assets? Yeah. Or are they assets in the real sense? Mm. Because many people have vague perceptions about finance and they think that is their you know investments. And all of a sudden when you get the data, it's all in insurance. <laughs> and people have completely no, no idea about what they've done. And also understanding the liabilities because how much do they owe mm. an financial institution or relatives or something, they, that needs to be put in account. Third is understanding their financial goals. Mm. That is where it's like a very counseling session happens. People would always aim for the moon. It's a bit of a reality check. It's a bit of a reality check that, you know, understand your situation now, you know, gather the ammunition and then start firing. Yeah. So having a complete count of your financial goals is where a proper sit down session with the couple or the individual takes place and all the goals are then put in perspective because I personally believe that investments or expense should have a purpose. It just can't be floating in thin air yeah. and every asset what you have or every income should be directed towards a goal. Mm. Fourth is getting data for your existing insurance, you know, whatever you've done. And Sorry to say, but that opens a complete landmine because so many people have no clue about the right insurance and putting that in order takes a hell lot of a time mm. and getting the right insurance for them. And taxation is a byproduct because we don't file returns, but we help people for tax optimization. So a lot of data gathering happens. Then we sit down and give our first report to the clients that this is where you stand right now. Are there any red flags? Mm. And if so, do it now because then it will be beyond, you know, rectification and it will be a problem. Yeah. Post that, there are continuous meetings on giving the client a gist of their profile, mm. of what we find, how you should be, you know, going about your goals, 
how you should be you know moving towards the right investments and where you should be trimming your you know wrong deeds mm -hmm. you know or cutting them out in fact yeah. so that process takes place and followed by review meetings mm. the review meetings are very necessary because there could be changes in the financial field yeah. interest rates or you know market conditions which compel us to you know new take a revised new rules coming up or there could be changes in the client's life which is dynamic yeah so that way the entire annual process of financial planning takes place mm. and it's like once you are with a financial planner it's obvious that you do not consult anybody else or take advice from you know your relatives or friends or something because then the whole exercise becomes redundant yeah, yeah. Uh, this actually brings me to my next question because you know you are talking about review meetings so when when someone signs on for this kind of help is it something that you would look at for a year at least is there like a time period that you sort of commit to or how does it work how often are the review meetings is this like a process that can go on for years and years or can it be just that you know help me out for these two months take me through what's going on and then i'll handle it so brilliant brilliant question i think what happens is ideally the time frame is one year mm. because one year is good enough time for first getting the data which takes in fact two to three weeks from the client's end yeah because he's never dug out his data when asked Wouldn't for it be a tedious process it is a tedious process yeah. and he's never done that so he has to give it religiously to the the advisor that takes around 2 to 3 weeks it takes around the same period of time for us to analyze mm. because as i've always said you know finance today is a concrete jungle and even we come across so many instruments which we've never heard across yeah. so far because some have been misguided some have done out of their whims and fancies mm. that takes time third what happens after that is as i mentioned to you that these review meetings mm. they could be really emotional stroke financial shattering events you know because when a person gives out his story about his financial you know aspirations or shortcomings it could get quite uh, elaborate and you might have to then double up behaving like a counselor mm. or in fact i would say a financial psychiatrist to quell those doubts and uh, you know put that person that okay you have to do this you made this mistake now you need to move on yeah. and not commit those mistakes again so lot of struggle lot of you know tumbling blocks come across the way for some it's good and easy because they haven't committed mistakes good everything is rosy but needs to be understood that this takes time mm. and that is why we have quarterly review meetings okay the time frame is quarterly so that also gives the the client or that individual time to execute mm. and come back to us whether that advice has translated into action yeah. that is more necessary you can't just keep hearing and not do anything mm. you just can't be just keep sitting on anything you know so that is the the thing one year is good enough now some people would come and say that i just require very specific advice my other ends are taken care of so we might be compelled to say plan. yeah so we can just say a quarterly like a three month plan could be fine enough the letter of engagement and everything has to be drafted accordingly so there is no ambiguity at all it's complete transparency mm. and all the parameters of compliance are met yeah okay very interesting and uh, you know i completely understand what you are saying that this can be a very anxiety inducing process right i mean you don't know you don't know what whether what you're thinking in terms of your goals what you're currently doing actually does match up and then you have someone sitting and taking you through the process yeah. it is a bit of a uh, you know it's more of a reality check yeah it's a bit, it's a bit yeah. of a reality check for sure yeah. so you're mentioning the time horizons that you know maybe you can do a couple of months as well but one year would perhaps be better in order yeah. for a more uh, you know complete approach is there a minimum amount that you need to um, be investing or you know want managed that that a client needs to have or would you look at any kind of no so so again it's quite transparent okay it's on the uh, sebi portals and everywhere that uh, the fees like uh, how an ria would charge mm -hmm. i'm talking about the investment advisors here only mm -hmm. is that there are two ways they can charge one is a percentage of the assets under advisory mm -hmm. which is 2.5% of the assets under advisory which he's charging that's a maximum cap yeah so it's up to the client and the advisor to come a uh, amount which is percentage below that or the same amount that's the maximum they can charge if it's percentage of the assets under advisory mm. so obviously then it depends on the entire net worth of the individual and a amount is decided and it goes 
the second one is a fixed fee model mm. which is regardless of the assets under advisory the fees is capped at 125000 per annum okay that's again an outer cap okay so as per the convenience or you know the win win situation for both the client and the advisor mm. an amount a, a very reasonable amount has to be worked out. One lakh twenty-five is the outer limit, mm. and the whole annual plan takes place. So okay. that's the so if if a person genuinely needs advice and uh, you know he's uh, completely in a turmoil, mm. then there is no question like what you asked about the investing amount. Yeah. How much can you put in? He might be wanting different advice of mm. for rectifying his life yeah. stage, whichever he is. So minimum amount. And again, it's up to the individual. So some advisors would say, okay, I don't take somebody below a certain amount of AUA. Mm. Now that's his way of looking at it. Okay. So or some fixed fee advisor would say, my base fees would be this much, anything between X and 125 would be my fees. Mm. So again, it's a, it's a business proposition. It's completely as per the willingness of two parties, mm. but the caps are set. Okay. Got that. Just one final question, uh, and this is one that we get a lot, which is why I'm just, you know, forwarding it to sure, you. Sure. If someone, um, you know, this is, we've spoken about the entire financial planning, but if someone just tells you that, listen, Kalpesh, I have five lakhs that I've saved, I want to invest this somewhere, wherever you suggest, and I have another maybe, you know, 20,000, 25,000 per month, which I want to put in somewhere. Uh, what is the kind of plan that you would suggest to someone like this? There's some young someone, you know, willing to invest for a long time, uh, what would you suggest? So, uh, this is bereft of being a RIA or being an MFD. Yeah. Okay, I'll answer it in two parts. First is, I would obviously tell him that if somebody's coming with a, a lump sum amount and a willingness to invest something every month, like what, what your question is, then obviously I would just ask him certain verbal questions. Okay. You know, that uh, verbally, in the sense that how would you, you know, look at this money, is it for the long term? Are you promising yourself that you won't touch it in between? You don't have any short term commitments. Are you mitigated with other risks which you've taken? Okay. And certain questions like those. And then put him on a path saying that, okay, this is what uh, my fees are. If you would like to get associated and want more elaborate advice on you know, your financial planning, handholding, you can sign up with me on a fee based hmm. module. Yeah. And you can go ahead with it. Mm. how you would like to do it. And obviously, we are allowed to advise on direct plans. So he would be under the direct plan ambit, yeah. which is there, which has an obviously a benefit of uh, marginal of cost in the mutual fund space. Or else, if he wishes to genuinely, you know, uh, say that I don't want to engage with you again, and that's about it, then it is his call how he wants to, you know, take it forward and be engaged with a distributor. Mm. Because he doesn't want to pay my fees for that. Yeah. So, like what you said, I come across so many people with this dilemma. Mm. At times, you feel that, you know, the choice of selecting either an RIA or an MFD yeah. should be left to the individual investor. Because, <laughs> you need help planning that also. You yeah, know? because because that is how the entire se setup is there today. Yeah. And again, so if we are giving advice, there are very good MFDs also today who give very, very concrete and sound advice mm. for the benefit of the client. If you want just to invest, you're not looking at, you know, anything. Yeah, like not looking at anything. And if that person is not willing to pay a fee, mm. because it has to be a win-win situation, yeah. because if we aren't earning anything from the execution of a direct plan, we have to compensate through the fee. Of course. And if an MFD is getting that, he'll compensate through his thing. So the thing is, selecting the right advisor, Pavitra, is mm. very important. And the person who can handhold you and guide you and who just doesn't talk about returns mm. and who talks about more of your interests and your you know financial goals i think that is the person whom with whom a person should ideally associate like you said you have a health doctor you have a family you know doctor you need a money doctor as well yeah, and it can yeah. it can really benefit everyone and i'm so glad we did this episode kalpesh thanks, thanks for coming down Pleasure. to the studios i think it's all important you know for anyone to just know what the process is like so that they can make an informed decision whether they want to go with an mfd or an investment advisor is of course dependent on their own circumstances what they want but here's putting all of the options on the table so thank you for coming down thanks to our studios that is uh, kalpesh ashar talking to us about what the financial 
planning process can really look like and some of the finer details which I don't think we've addressed on this episode ever of you know MF Corner as well. So I hope that helps our viewers and stay tuned, we'll be back for lots more.